Thank you for purchasing the High Impact Flex Fence. This DVD is a visual how-to manual that will assist you in installing your fence, as well as a handy reference tool if you run into any problems or have questions during any step of the process. You also have an instruction manual included with your fence. Both are easy to understand guides and should help you install your fence. Before beginning your installation, please take a few moments to conduct a detailed, accurate assessment of your specific site to be fenced, as well as check to make sure you have all the necessary tools and materials needed to complete the job. What sets the high impact flex fence apart from traditional fences is its high tensile wire embedded in polymer. Keep in mind that the high impact flex fence must be tensioned in order to function properly. All ends and corner posts must be braced and concreted to withstand these pressures. Again, before you begin, make sure you have the tools and hardware for installing your high impact flex fence. The following is a list of everything you will need. Check off all items on the list prior to starting. See your instruction manual for complete written details. The following illustration is an example of a layout used to explain the installation of the high impact flex fence. Your installation layout should represent exactly what you need. Remember, before installing, make sure that all wood posts you use are treated. Untreated wood posts may compromise the structural integrity of your fence due to exposure to the elements. We only recommend round posts to be used for your end and corner assemblies. Do not use square posts for these structures because your fence rail cannot function as designed. If you so choose to use square posts, your actions will compromise your warranty. Use round posts only for your ends and corners. Next, you will need to determine how many end plates and tighteners will be required for installation. Since the distance around the paddock is less than 660 feet, you will need only one of each per rail. In this case, multiply the number of rails times the end plates and tighteners. This amount is four of each. Next, you will determine the amount of fencing that is required, that is, rolls of fence. The following illustration is an example of how many rolls of fencing will be needed for this particular example installation. Now, add up your totals thus far. End and corner upright posts with 6 inch diameter by 8 to 9 feet in length means 5 posts will be needed. Line posts with a 4 to 5 inch diameter by 7 to 8 feet long means 53 posts will be needed. You will also need two termination diagonal brace posts and six corner diagonal brace posts, giving you a total of 61 posts. For this particular installation, four rolls of fence are needed, four tighteners, and four end plates. Mix each 80 pound bag of concrete according to the manufacturer's instructions found on the bag. Keep in mind that all concrete footer depths must be below the frost line for your area. If you don't know or are unsure what the frost line is for your area, talk with your local extension office before installation. Concrete footers vary depending on hole size, but in this example, we are using a 12 inch auger. Also note that if you have unstable soil, you may have to use a horizontal diagonal end and corner post assembly and or larger diameter augered holes. Call High Impact Flex Fence for details at 1-800 853-1611. The amount of concrete needed for each job varies. For example, for end post assemblies in the northern states, you will need 7 to 8 80 pound bags of premixed concrete. This is based on a 47 inch frost line. In southern states, you will need 4 to 5 bags. This is based on a 17 inch or less frost line. For the corner post assembly in the northern states, you will need 11 to 12 bags. This again is based on a 47 inch frost line. In southern states, you will need six to seven bags. This is based on a 17 inch frost line. Now is the time to lay out your fence line perimeter. This example in the illustration is a 200 foot by 120 foot paddock area. First, locate all corner posts. 
Next, run the string line approximately six feet past the corner and ends. If a 90 degree corner is required, you can use the 3 4 5 triangle method, shown in the instruction manual. Now, mark your end corner and line post locations using marking paint. Line posts are usually set at a 12 foot distance from each other, including from the end and corner posts. The diagonally braced post's hole location is at 70 inches center distance from the upright end or corner posts. See the corresponding sketch of your instruction manual for details. When selecting a gate, keep in mind that gates are usually sold by the opening. For a 12-foot opening, you will have an 11 and a half foot gate. This leaves room for the hinges and hardware. All corners need to have the fence rail run on the outside of the upright post, as shown in the example. The next step is digging your holes. Please remember before you begin digging, call your local utility office or dial 811 and they will mark the location of your utility lines. The following shows an example of typical post specifications for line end and corner posts. Line posts should be set with tamped soil. The post tops will be cut off after the flow of the fence has been determined. All posts should be approximately 56 inches or taller above ground level. And and or gate posts are set with concrete. Please note that these posts will lean away from the applied tension. Again, all concreted footers must be below the frost line. Line post holes should be approximately 24 to 36 inches deep. End and corner post holes are 36 to 48 inches deep, depending on frost line, and filled with concrete to about 4 inches below ground level. Make sure that the bottom of the hole is enlarged at least 6 inches wider than the top of the hole. Diagonally braced post holes should be a minimum of 18 inches deep with a faced off section at 18 inches. Refer to the instruction manual for details. Again, this hole must be below the frost line for your area. This hole is located 70 inches from the end or corner post hole measured center to center. Start off by placing the upright post in the deep hole. Then mark 40 inches from ground level on these posts. Lean the post away from the tension about one inch. Next, put the diagonal brace post in its footing three to four inches while holding it next to the 40 inch mark on the upright post. Mark the diagonal line on the brace post and with the aid of a chainsaw, cut it off. Next, nail the brace plate to the post at the bottom of the cut end. Then, place the diagonal post at the 40 inch mark on the upright post and nail the brace plate in place. All corner post assemblies are constructed the same as the end post, except one additional brace is required. Also note that when nailing the brace plate to the upright post, you may have to overlap and use a common hole. After posts have been placed in their belled out holes, your next step is to fill them with concrete. Before you fill with concrete, check your string line and lean your post one inch away from the pull of the fence after it is tensioned. Fill all holes with concrete to about four inches below the grass line. Make sure your diagonal post uncut end is set in concrete approximately three to four inches. After the concrete is set, Backfill with dirt to ground level. Now we will set the line posts. Begin by placing the line posts into the line post holes. Make sure posts are no more than one eighth of an inch away from your string line and are plumb in both directions. Tap the soil around the line posts. Do this by adding three to six inches of dirt to the hole and tap until it is solid. Then Add another three to six and tamp. Continue tamping process until the hole is filled to ground level around post. If you have posts in a valley, they will need to be concreted due to the up pull force after tensioning. See your installation manual for details. Once these steps are completed, you can paint all your posts. Once your posts are dry, 
you will need to determine the top of your posts. From this line, you will mark the bracket locations. First, mark on the side of the post a line at 54 inches. Do this on all upright posts. Then, using a highly visible string, start at the end post and wrap it around every post at the 54-inch mark, making sure it is tight between each post. Remove any abrupt rises and falls in the string line by moving it up and down on the post. At this point, you are looking for the average height of your fence over the entire length. Be sure you are completely satisfied with the flow of the string line. This is very important because it will influence the overall appearance of the fence itself. Take your time and check it frequently to make sure it is to your satisfaction. It is helpful to have someone look at the string line from different angles just to be sure. Next, mark the new string line. This is the top of the post. With the aid of a homemade template, mark the locations of the top of each bracket. After you have marked your bracket locations on each post, remove the string. Then, cut the tops off at the string line mark. Use a 5 to 10 degree angle away from the bracket location mark when cutting the tops off. This angle will allow water to run off rather than accumulate on the post tops. Then, paint all post tops. After your painted tops have dried, it is time to install your brackets. The brackets are installed at each mark on the posts with the bottom nail only. You'll install the top nail after the fence rail is paid out. Make sure the brackets are centered on each line and corner post. This is important because the rail must slide freely through each bracket and around the round corner posts. In order to pay out the fence, drive a crowbar or stob in the ground near the end post. Try to select an area without stones and with grass. Place the roll of fence over the crowbar or stob. Once this is done, remove the plastic wrap and retain the label. Remove the tape and pull the rail of fence around your perimeter. Be sure to leave a couple of feet on both ends before cutting the rail off. Place rail in brackets and hammer the top nail in place. Do this on all brackets. If you need to splice your rail together, please refer to the installation manual, pages 15 through 17. Now that you have your fence put in their brackets, it's time to put up your end plates and tighteners. Your end plates will be installed first. At this point, it doesn't matter what end post you select. Use Sketch 1 to locate the horizontal marks on the end post. You should then measure back 2 inches from the middle of the post to find the spot to drill the 3 8 inch diameter by 4 inches. This will be the pilot hole for the lag bolt. Install lag bolt through end plate and screw it into your pilot hole you just drilled. Leave it loose until the bent rail is installed. This will be explained later. They should only be snugged up and not tightened. Be sure to do this on all rails. In order to prepare the rail to be attached to the end plate, take the end of the fence and fold it over about a foot on itself, keeping the sides parallel. Measure back one and a half inches and mark the fence. Cut excess rail off at your mark. You'll need high tensile wire cutters to cut through the wire. Hammer the cut end down. Don't hammer it flat, rather leave about a half inch gap. Fit the short end into the slot of the end plate. Snug up the lag bolt, pinching the bent fence end. Make sure it's snug, but not tight. Pull all excess slack out of fence back to the other end post where you'll install your tighteners. Using Sketch 1 for reference, mark and drill a pilot hole. Drill this hole in the end post to a depth of approximately 4 inches using a 3 8 inch diameter bit. The location for your tightener is in the center of this post. Do not measure back the 2 inches as you did for your end plate. If you are pulling the fence rail from the right of the end post, you can use it as it arrives to you from our factory. 
If you are pulling it from the left of the end post, you will need to remove the linchpin and washer from the drop tube. Then pull this tube out of the tightener body and flip it over. Put the washer back in place and also the linchpin. Put the lag bolt through the tightener and into your pre-drilled hole. Snug up the lag bolt on the tightener. The tightener is now ready to accept the rail. Measure 3 inches past the slot in the drop tube and mark the fence with the aid of a T-square. Cut the rail off at this point. Insert fence end in slot. Put your half-inch drive ratchet in the square opening of the drop tube. While applying finger pressure and keeping the rail perpendicular to the drop tube, spool up the rail with the ratchet. Keep in mind, if your tightener is installed to the right of the end post, turn your ratchet counterclockwise, and if you're on the left side, turn it clockwise. This will keep the rail closest to the post. You'll have to put a rivet in a lined up hole while you're tensioning the fence rail. This is required to get another bite with your ratchet. And due to the spring back action created with spooling, continue to ratchet until slack is removed, but don't tighten the fence yet. Now, go back to your end plate post and follow the remaining instructions. The end plate should be lined up with your fence run because you've applied a minimum force with your tightener. Take a step back, look it over thoroughly, and make sure you're satisfied with the flow from the end plate. After you've determined the end plate is in line with your fence run, install the two smaller screws. A pilot hole shouldn't be necessary. Next, tighten these two screws, which are designed to trap the bent short section of fence between the end plate and the post. Now, tighten the lag bolt. Now that you've installed your end plates, you're ready to completely tighten your fence. With the help of either a long handle ratchet or a cheater bar, which is a two foot long piece of pipe that will slide over your ratchet handle, tighten your fence. If you fill up the tightener's drop tube with rail and your fence isn't tight, do the following. Start with removing the rivet and pulling the rail out of the drop tube. Again, Pull the rail back about 3 inches past the slot in the tightener and cut off the excess rail. Place it back in the slot and retighten. Keep in mind, your fence will have to be worked around corners to achieve uniform tension throughout the entire length. Once you've tightened the fence, insert the two rivets into any two lined up holes. Hammer both nails through tightener holes and into posts. Congratulations on installing your high impact flex fence. Remember, this DVD is merely for illustration purposes only. Please consult your instruction manual if you need further details about any part of the installation. You can log on to our website, www.ramfence.com, or call our toll free customer service department at 1 800 853 1611.